Hey everybody, it's me as always your host Gambit896 and I'm back with another video for you guys. Today I'll be re-reviewing Saga Volume 1. The series is written by Brian K. Vaughan and illustrated by Fiona Staples and this first trade collects the first six issues of the series which is published by Image Comics. So the story starts out and we meet our main trio of characters. So we have Alana, Marco and their baby Hazel. We find out right from the get-go that Marco and Alana are from two opposing warring alien races who have defected from their individual armies and have fallen in love with one another, gotten married and had a child. And the story literally opens up with Alana giving birth to Hazel. And there's a really great endearing um, character moment for uh, the character of Marco, as you can see. he's crying with happiness while holding his baby girl for the first time as you can see there Fiona Staples artwork in this is absolutely fantastic and is equally on par with Brian K Vaughan's equally fantastic storytelling and writing throughout this series there's a really great um, comedic moment for um, Marco and Alana as um, Marco was trying to uh, sever the umbilical cord by biting on it uh, we find out later on as to why he's actually wearing a sword, but due to a vow that he's made, uh, he refuses to let the sword leave its scabbard, essentially. Um, there's a really great action scene right from the get-go. We find out that Marco and Alana are from, like I said, two warring, uh, opposing alien races. Marco is from a race of beings known as the Moonies, who are a magic-embracing uh, race of beings who also have magic induced or in, imbued um, swords and Alana is from uh, the race of beings known as the Landfolians who are again a race of beings that uh, heavily embrace technology so there you can see there's complete um, opposites in terms of the races of people that both of our uh, main characters including Hazel making the trio um, different. Um, the series is also narrated by Hazel, which I think is really, really interesting. Um, we also have the introduction of some of our main character, uh, our main secondary characters. So we have the character of Prince Robot the Fourth, who is this blue uniform clad individual with a TV for a head, and we find out that he's been instructed by his father who is the king of robot world to deal with the situation that is posed by Marco and Alana and so is sent out to find them and retrieve them. We also have the introduction of the Will and Lion Cat who is probably one of my favourite animal characters in any comic book series ever um, as there's some really great comedic moments with Lion Cat later on in the later issues and the reason as to why Lion Cat is so awesome, and because she's just a fantastic character, is that she can tell when somebody is lying. And as you can see from the bottom left panel, we can see that Lion Cat has sniffed out a lie, which has been told to her, um, her sidekick um, of the Will. Um, so Will basically says, okay, no more lies, tell me the truth, what do you want to hire me for? And so he gets hired to, again, find and track down Marco, Alana and Hazel. The series is also peppered with some really great laugh out loud humour moments um, in amongst all of the just fantastic science fiction fantasy elements of the story with a good dose of Romeo and Juliet um, sort of thrown in there for good measure. We also have the introduction of the Stork, who's a freelancer or a bounty hunter that's also been set on our main trio of characters trail, as you can see there. There's also a really great character defining moment for Alana, who would rather see Hazel die at her own hand than hand her over to a character such as the Stork. Brian K. Vaughan just does a fantastic job at giving each of these characters that he introduces their own ind individual voices and personalities and he writes the character of Alana particularly in the scene between um, the, 
herself and the stork as being a really strong and independent woman um, who can easily hold her own even without uh, even without Marco by her side who's currently at this moment in the story incapacitated to say the least. We also have the introduction of Isabel who's a ghost and is again probably one of my favorite characters that are introduced in these first six issues. Um, just the way she talks to Marco and Alana is just fantastic. Um, she's just a really, really cool character and probably one of my favorite incorporeal um, or paranormal characters in comics. Um, and the way these characters talk through the dialogue, again on the part of Brian K. Vaughan, they talk as if you and as if you and I were were talking. You know, just regular, you know, human beings, shall we say? Which I think is a really great touch. Um, and is again just an example of how um, great of a writer Brian K. Vaughan is. Um, the series has a really, really unique kind of quirk to it, where it opens up with probably one of the strangest things you've ever seen. Like here's the beginning to issue four, and I'll show you the original series cover by Fiona Staples, as you can see there. This is probably one of my favourite um, original series covers that Fiona Staples does. Um, and we see these women with abnormally large heads and just ex even more abnormally sized legs as well. So we have the Will and Lion Cat going to the planet of Sextillion, which is a planet full of sex, essentially. Um, this series is definitely not for younger readers. This is definitely a mature or more adult readers um, comic. Also in issue 4, there's a great character moment for the character of the Will. Um, and I have to say, when I first read the scene in, in issue 4, and for those of you who have read it, you'll know what I'm talking about, there's a scene with a young girl who's um, one of the workers on Sextillion. And I did initially think I was a bit uneasy about reading the scene, as I thought Brian K. Vaughan might have gone a step too far, but then he just turns it around and just completely there's a 180 on you and just really gives, like I said, a great defining moment for the character of the Will and also gives him some resolution and a plot point for the way forward into the later issues of the series which he vows to get the young girl that he encounters off of the planet of Sextillion. And again, here's another example of some of the action scenes with Marco, as you can see there. And there. Fiona Staples not only does the um, the artwork in this, but she also does her own colouring and she also does the original series covers as well. And I have to give credit where credit is due. She does a fantastic job on each and every single one of the three duties that she undertakes in this series. Um, this is just an absolutely fantastic series and the first six issues is a, just a great read. This was by far one of the best series, if not the best series I read in 2012. And this first story arc left me wanting the next trade right away of the next six issues, which is 7 through 12, um, which is coming out in a few months' time. And I wanted it right away, and I wanted it then on the on the first initial read. I wanted even more now on the reread of the first six issues in this first trade. Brian K. Vaughan, why do you do this to me? Urgh. You end it in such a way which is just has me aching for the next story bit and the next trade and you just urgh. Like I said, this series is absolutely fantastic and it's an absolute five out of five from me for a rating of the first six issues of Saga. Brian K. Vaughan's writing in this is absolutely fantastic, like I said. Equally on par is Fiona Staples artwork. Um if you're a fan of science fiction stories with um, fantasy elements. If you're a fan of the... I've heard this series described as Star Wars meets Romeo and Juliet. So if you're a fan of the, the premise for this book, I definitely say that this series is worth checking out. If you're a fan of Brian K. Vaughan, who you know from Why the Last Man, Ex Machina, Runaways, Pride of Baghdad. Uh, Pride of Baghdad I definitely think is also another series that's worth checking out. And is another great example of an indie comic. Um, done really really well um, and also Brian K. Bond's writing on that is also fantastic um, Fiona Staples has done some of the um, 
she did some artwork with uh, Steve Niles on his six issue limited series I think um, called Mystery Society it's either five or six it's either a five or six issue limited series and she also did one of the original series covers for uh, one of the issues of Jonah Hex before the DC New 52 reboot um, back in 2011 like I said absolute five out of five for Saga Volume 1 absolutely fantastic and I highly recommend it admittedly the series isn't for everybody but the first trade is only $9.99 in American dollars um, so in UK pounds or sterling pounds that's about roughly seven or eight pounds um, so I definitely say the series is worth checking out um, if nothing else see if you can get a tr get a copy from the library ask your copy ask your library to order you in a copy of the first trade and check it out from the library if you're not sure of it. like I said absolutely fantastic and definitely worth picking up and that about concludes this review video guys thank you everybody for watching hope you all enjoyed this video if you did give it a thumbs up if you didn't like it give it a thumbs down as always feel free to leave a comment below in the comment section if you're new please feel free to subscribe and until next time this is Scambit896 signing off and I'll see you guys next time. Take care guys.